Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Philip Wilkerson back with another episode of Positive Filter. I'm joined by a special guest. Well, everyone is a special guest. I'm joined by one of my higher ed colleagues in the eastern region, eastern area, uh, Mr. Joe Santa Cruz. I hope I pronounced that correct. I just call him Joe. And it's like the first time I'd really used formal last names um, on this. But um, he is a career professional at Salem uh, State University. We've connected through Eastern Ace which when I said is the Eastern region, kind of like that uh, Eastern region uh, professional development for career centers uh, and also employers, but I, I definitely just say the career centers, uh, whatnot. And we connected, we vibe. Uh, I was on one of his uh, shows for his office in regards to professional development. I was like, you know what? I would love to have you as a guest on Positive Filter. Um, so before we get in this topic, uh, Joe, give the listeners a little bit of a introduction of who you are. Sure. And uh, first of all, thank you for having me on tonight. I'm excited to be here. Um, I know when we first had our initial conversation, I was like, yeah, let's do this. You know, this should, this would be a good time. So I'm excited to be here and excited to have this conversation. So, um, you know, as you mentioned, I am a career professional, been, been pretty much my, my entire career in higher ed has been career services with the exception of a, about eight months. So it's, it's, it's kind of all I've done really. Um, and I know we're both part of an org, the organization Eastern Ace, which has been fantastic to me to develop professionally. Uh, personally, I live uh, born and raised, grew up just north of Boston, uh, still live north of Boston now, um, and uh, married two boys. Um, and, you know, this is, this is it. Like, it's just, it's, it's just a crazy life right now. <laughs> yeah. And we, and we, and we're definitely, I mean, that's probably what the topic is. I know we connected earlier about, um, you know, career development. Um, I can't remember. I think my topic was like networking or something like that. It was networking. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Um, but I was like, you know what? I think we could expand upon that, but like bring our personal experiences. You said the father of two boys. So, uh, let's just, you know, read the room. Um, how has COVID been as a working father for you? And I think that's what we're going to focus on today, but how okay. it? just like, yeah, the most, this is going to be the most blanketed question first and it will dive into some things but how is it okay balancing that work-life balance as a father and a full-time employee yeah i would say the the one word i would use to describe it is crazy <laughs> <laughs> um because you know i think that when, when you when you look at it from a perspective of i've never worked out of my house before this was the the first time uh, i've ever worked i've ever been remote um you mm-hmm. take that and all of a sudden everything is now just kind of melded into one thing, right? Where um, I I typically work in my basement. Uh, If I have a break, I can run upstairs and, uh, and help out with something with the kids. Um, So in that sense, it's, it's good where I get to spend more time with the kids. I get to see them more. Um, But I use the word crazy because you feel like you're just going a million miles an hour. Right. And I remember specifically at the beginning of all this stuff, um, when it was pretty much like, Hey, you can't see anybody. Don't have anybody come in the house, not even close mm-hmm. family. Um, it was basically my wife and I kind of just trading off. Okay. What time is your meeting mm-hmm. today? Mm-hmm. And what time mm-hmm. is mine? And we can, and, and, and okay, I'm going to come up then you can go up then and you come down then and I'll go up. And it's just, it was absolutely insane. Um, since everything has, mm-hmm. you know, progressed, um, we've been able to kind of bring more folks in and, you know, help us out with childcare. So that's really been helpful. Um, I would be lost, I think, without that. Um, but still, I, I, it's, it's just a, a world that kind of got flipped upside down and, and you just kind of take it day by day. That's, that's the best way I can describe just day by day. Yeah. So I have a couple, the, one of the follow-up questions is how old are the ages of your kids? Because I know sure. I have a, um, a three-year-old and a six-year-old. So that's, that's the, the, you know, it's a different experience. And then particularly with the trade-off similar to, uh, I'm assuming, like you said, you're both working parents, me and my wife are both working parents. My wife was a, is, not was, is a school social worker. 
And okay. so she, we had that trade-off mindset too. So, you know, for, for the, you know, context, what are the ages of your children sure. and, and what, you know, your wife, what is she doing? Sure. Sure. Um, so my, my boys are young. Um, my oldest drew, he turned three in November mm-hmm. and then my youngest Luke just turned two last week. So oh, they're, okay. they're close in age and, and they're young. And so I think that, you know, that has played into this as well, where, mm-hmm. you know, when you're that young, it's hard to, you can't really leave them anywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it, there's, there's, there's kind of need, they need that constant supervision. So that in of itself has been part of that craziness and that challenge. Um, now my wife works in market research. Um, she actually works part-time. So she does about 20 hours per week. And she started doing that after our first son was born. Um, so it's been nice. She's been able to work out of the house. Her company has been super, super flexible with all that stuff. Um, so in, in that sense, like that has actually helped us a lot too, uh, where, you know, it isn't too full-time scheduled. It's a, it's a full-time and a, and a part-time one. Um, and I remember what we were doing, she takes Wednesdays off. And so mm-hmm. Thursday is typically her busiest day. So for the months, I think it was last April and May and a little bit of June, I was off on Thursdays. It was just because, you know, okay, let's, let's trade off this day for that day, you know, and, and, and do what we can. So, um, you know, but the thing I will say, you mentioned you, your oldest is six years old. I don't know where they are in school, but that was one of the things I think we're really fortunate is I'm not, we don't have to worry about classroom stuff right now, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. challenging with having to watch them all the time, but at least they're not in school and having to go, you know, in that direction too. Yeah. I mean, I was about to say like, you know, and that's why I love to talk to other parents especially conversations like this is like, there's no cookie cutter experience about this. You know, like I can't, you know, compare my experience with my ages to yours. You know, maybe some of the, some of the parents got high school kids and there's different levels of drama and issues there. Um, but, you know, I think one of the things that is unifying for all parents is this, this like blurred line of boundaries. Like it's completely, regardless of the age, uh, ages like this line of of being a parent and then being a full time employee uh, has been completely blurred. Um, yes, for you and and this is and this these are like I said this is just an open conversation. When you wake up in the morning, uh, and I'm just what does your first thought go to? Does it go? It is just like a random thought that I've had. Does it automatically go to like okay, father mode and and fill in work right? Like work is secondary. Or does it go to work first and then say, like, let me figure out how to, to balance the kids? It actually, because I get up really early, it actually goes to work mode first. Mm-hmm. And that's just to organize my day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> then, yeah. You know, I give myself a little bit of time kind of early on to get things settled. Uh, and then it turns into dad mode. And then it turns into a mixture. And, mm-hmm. you know, like you, like you say, kind of like it, it's all combined into one to me, like a lot of times when I, when I was on campus, right, I'm working on mm-hmm. campus, mm-hmm. that was my time for work. And I, when I left at the end of the day, I would shut that light off and, and I'm not thinking about it until the next morning when I'm coming in. Right. Oh, man. But now you're living in it almost. Right. And so, so home has become work too. And so it feels like nothing ever really shuts off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I, I never had my work email on my phone before. And now oh. I do. Hey, you know, I, yeah. That never, was, that okay. was a, so you need that was a conscious you. decision not to okay. do that by, okay. by, right. Cause I'm like, you know what? I, I need to shut it off at some point, but now there'd be times where I'm like, I have to just go up with the kids. Let me just have my, have my work email. Right. Or if I wake up in the morning, let me just check it really quick. Make sure there's nothing pressing before I, go do, maybe I go work out, maybe I go take a shot, right? Whatever it is, it, now it's just, it's just embedded into everything. So that's really it's, been a, it's been a challenge. I was about to say, teach me because that joke was on my phone before this. <laughs> like, I was doing stuff and answering emails at like 11 at night anyway. Um, well, that's what it is, right? I, I don't want to set that precedence, right? It's like, I want, I want that boundary, you know? And I think that's part of the thing. And you tell me, I don't know in terms of your career choice going into higher ed, but part of it for me was like, I wanted that work-life balance, you know? And and I think early on in my, in my career, you know, as a, as a single guy that, that didn't, wasn't married, didn't have a family at the time, 
I think my, my thoughts were, okay, you know, this will be helpful one day when it, when I, when I do cross that path and I I am there, I do have, I do have kids. And so, you know, that was, that was part of the intentionality behind it. Um, But again, like we say, there's no blueprint for this of what's going on, right? It just, it just kind of, it just kind of happened. And all of a sudden there's this pandemic and you're, and now everything just is is happening out of the house. (laughs) Well, I mean, I don't know, uh, for me, to be quite honest, when we met, um, and I think maybe we even overlapped, is that uh, I kind of fell into higher ed for me. And then I wasn't really serious about my, well, not say I was working. I just never saw like me being impactful. You know, I, I just, it was just a job, check the list um, sure. of different positions. Sure. And so more, most recently in about three years ago where I really found my lane. And then, then I was like, work, I think work actually became more of a priority to me. Um, right. Right before this pandemic was, which I think if I had, uh, if I had like a couple, like two jobs before this, I think this pandemic would have been easier because I was already like, kind of like not really as motivated, but right. I, like, right, I, 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 I screenshot it myself. Like I remember before this started, I was like 2020, I'm going to kill it. Like I was, I was so professional loaded uh, in that mode, like uh, that, you know, taking off uh, in regards to uh, my career, but then this right. pandemic hit. So I think we similar to the other situation. I think we were in different spaces in our career as well before this pandemic hit. Right. Uh, mentally. Right. Right. So one of the things, you know, obviously, as uh, I think a lot of the focus, I was watching today's show and uh, a lot of the focus, particularly in regards to gender, you know, like we already know there's different, you know, societal issues, not issues, but societal roles that uh, during right. COVID, there was a dis- disproportionate effect of COVID on women in the workplace, meaning there was like a mass exodus, forced mass exodus or women, right. women unemployment. Um, and I don't think there's a lot in that conversation about fathers. So yeah. I don't know, just informally, not, not the statistics. Have you heard like from other dads about this time affecting them? Um, so I have a group of, I guess my high school buddies, that's, that's yeah. what I'm kind of closest with, you know, and yeah. Yeah. it's, it's funny because we all obviously graduated high school together. Um, stayed in touch throughout college. I'll live relatively close, although some of the, some of the guys have moved out of state and stuff like that. But um, we've all kind of had kids around the same time. And so, mm-hmm. you know, there's some that are a couple of years old or a couple of years younger. And so really there's this nice mix and, and we're all kind of in this together, so to speak. And, you know, there's there were some, like you say, informal conversations uh, about it. I'm trying to think nothing like too specific or, or anything that really stood out that we haven't really mentioned more about like um, just shifting gears and, and, and you jump in here, you jump in there, right? Like it's really the same thing. A lot of us have kind of had to experience this. Now I know there are some of my friends who had their kids in daycare uh, and there were some big decisions of, do we keep them in? Do we, mm-hmm. Do we let them continue to go? And, and some of them decided we're going to, we're going to take our kids out. You know, um, others were like, you know what, we're going to take them out for a little bit and then we're going to, we're going to have to put them back in. And, and so I think what we've done is we've all stayed in touch on this app. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's called Marco Polo. Oh yeah. Yeah. The video, right? the quick video ones, but I have quick videos. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of started out as like, Hey, let's just kind of keep in touch. And then, you know, it's fun stuff for the kids. And then all of a sudden it's like adult talk and people are talking about the stuff and, it, and it's helped to be honest with you, you know, because mm. again, everybody, like you say, has their own thing. Like there's, there's different um, challenges for everybody, but when you're talking about raising kids and regardless of what age they are, a lot of those challenges become, become similar in nature. Um, and so we've kind of relied on that to, to stay in touch and to share ideas and just, you know, kind of talk about things. Well, you know, it's funny. You talked about the fatherhoods and the bond and the Marco Polo. Um, I also read, I like to read it and, 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 and this is where I'm coming into fatherhood and just actual being, being guys during COVID was that, um, you know, they said that there was a disproportionate, well, not disproportionate, but there was a large effect on male friendships during COVID because they said that particularly are sports 
bars, all those things. And then when it was gone, they struggled because um, they struggled because they really didn't have like in depth, serious conversations with their boys. And then I read that article and I kind of laughed because that really kind of didn't apply to me. Like uh, me and my best friend, Hillard, I guess it's because we went through the He'll make fun of me and cut, talk about my haircut. But then the other moment we're talking about like, you know, our feelings, you know, and it's just right. things like not put that in print, but the real hardcore stuff. So right. with that being said, uh, did you feel that sense of like, you know, like we don't have our normal sports to talk about or uh, similar to this article, uh, similar to my experience, you and your boys were already having just real in-depth conversations before this. You know, as a group, we that's not uncommon for us to have those types of conversations. And I'm talking going back to high school now. It doesn't happen frequently, but yeah. you know, it, it yeah. certainly does. Um, similar to how you mentioned your best friend, one of my, my best friends, the, um, you know, he's my best man at, a, at my wedding. I was his best man, that type of thing. Like someone that I like, like you say, I'd consider him a brother, right? Like, I mean, we're that, we're that close. Um, it's the same thing, right? We're one minute, we're kind of joking around and, and talking about the Celtics the next minute where, you, you know, we're having a, a serious conversation about what's happening with our kids. And, you know, and, and there was a couple text messages, but, you know, and it was, it was like that, you know, and, but it was more just kind of around support, right. Kind of being there for each other. Hey, whatever you need type of deal. Um, but bringing it back to like that, that whole stigma, right. Of mm-hmm. usually with the guys, it's more low key. It's more that talking about sports and, and, and less of the true emotional stuff. Right. Which I think is, it makes sense. Right. I mean, I think that stuff happens, but um, you know, for us, it's like, I, I think because of this pandemic, it's kind of forced us to talk about it more because yeah. you need, you need yeah. that filter, yeah. right? Like you do, you need that filter. Yeah. I was about to say, I think the pandemic either accelerated or um, forced people. Um, how about, you know, uh, I think we're in a very female um, dominated yeah. <laughs> occupation, higher ed in yes. general. And career yeah. services. So yeah. um, I don't know, do, do you get a chance to jump in and talk about the dad talk with the, with the, with the ladies or you still feel like, you know, when they're talking parenthood stuff, we kind of stay out of it. What, Cause I, no. I'll be honest with you. I jump in. I jump, like, I, yeah. I jump yeah. in with those conversations, you know? Yeah, no, it's so ever since I started at Salem, our office has been really, really close. And that means we talk about personal things sometimes, right? Not, not like at a, at a level where that's uncomfortable, but, but definitely mm-hmm. personal things. Um, when I first started, I was the only guy in the office. Um, mm-hmm. Now, you know, seven plus years later, there's been, a, there's other guys in the office. And so it's the, 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 um, the folks in the office have changed. Um, but a lot of the conversations have really stayed the same you know, and, 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 and it, it, it's not uncommon for anybody just to kind of share things that are happening with their kids or, you know, um, significant others and, and pets even too, right. Mm. For some folks, like it just, it's just the way it is. And so, you know, in that sense, I think having kind of that close knit relationship allows us that flexibility when it's like, Hey, I need to take this day off because mm-hmm. we don't have childcare, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and at least, you know, there, there's that appreciation there. Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where I'll, I'll jump in too, you know, yeah. like I, it's, to me, it's like, it, it's helpful, you know? And I think that also like, I know this will get away from the parenthood thing, but like building a camaraderie in the office, like that mm-hmm. really helps, right. To be able to talk about that stuff. So yeah, it's, it's not uncommon for even, even at the beginning when I was the only guy in the office, mm-hmm. um, it's, it, it was definitely something I still talked about. Um, and that's another thing too, like, you know, you're right. It is a, it is certainly more female to male. In, in our industry, uh, in, in, in career services as well. But that's another reason about Eastern Ace that I think has been so great is that I've been able to really build relationships with a lot of people. Um, and if you look, if you look at us just having this conversation now, right? Like if we, if we weren't connected through Eastern Ace, you're in Virginia, I'm in Massachusetts, who knows, right? Like, mm-hmm. and so it's, it's been good and we're able to have these types of conversations and really develop these kind of personal um, relationships and friendships, right? Um, that, that it makes it exciting to kind of, to kind of um, stay in touch with the organization and stuff. So. Yeah. Well, I was about to say that too, because you brought it to the bigger, like you went from micro to macro is I think, particularly for me, right. um, larger organizations at least allow me a space uh, in a couple of ways, like, you know, like 
connecting with other guys in this space, right? That's yeah. one. But then also right. just in general, larger too, like maybe connecting with other black males, you know? So like, sure. like, like, uh, it's been, that has had been helpful during this pandemic um, is that not only, you know, the technology is staying in, in touch with my group of male friends, my high school boys, but then also I get to meet other male professionals like you or Junior or Bob, right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and just a wide range of guys in, in Eastern Ace that has really, um, I could text or ask questions, but then also just in general national. Um, so that's right. been really helpful. I don't know if the pandemic has exacerbated that or like you said, forced us to have those conversations. But I, I do believe that, I don't know, I just do, I really believe that this has forced a lot of technology. Like, like you said, Marco Polo, it's forced us to really like, like, take advantage of whatever we can. We have to like, be, just have to like almost MacGyver our social networks. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, how can I connect with my friends? Well, I got Marco Polo or, or Instagram right. or like, I just gotta find some way, but I'm gonna make an Something. effort, some lane yeah. to connect. Yeah, and I think it's like, it's that human nature, right? Where you're like, you strive for that normalcy. Mm -hmm. in some capacity, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and no matter what it was, if it's a, a simple conversation, um, my wife and I, this past summer, were fortunate enough to go out to lunch a couple times. And I think we got out to dinner a couple times and in a, in a safe environment when we sat outside and, you know, all that stuff, all the things that you're supposed to do. Um, but I think for us, it was like, we just, we want to be able to get away for a little bit, even if it's just <laughs> getting lunch or dinner. I mean, that oh, feeling, it was just, it was just so great, you know? So I think that like you, like you mentioned, like we, we kind of, we're kind of looking at this technology stuff, right? Anything that's going to allow us to kind of hold on to general normal life, like the things that we do day to day, mm -hmm. typically before the pandemic, I think, you know, as humans, we kind of strive just to do that. Um, and it's been tough. It's been an adjustment. Um, but I think, you know, and this will be more on the macro side, I think this allows everybody now this opportunity to, to really mm -hmm. kind of reevaluate things, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and can we utilize technology to our advantage in some instances, right? Um, whether it's in our work, staying connected to folks, right? Um, one, of, one of my really good friends, um, he lives in California. And, you know, besides just texting a couple times a, a year, unless he was visiting, um, you know, it was hard for us to get out there once we had kids. So, um, this has allowed us now, Marco Polo, to see to see him. Um, we've done some Zoom conversations too as a, as a group. So, you know, the technology has actually allowed us to almost, you know, see each other a little bit more, um, given the fact that life has just gotten so, so crazy. So, you know, I know you got two young children and all that stuff. And um, I know, our, uh, I don't know about yours, but my wife is like, okay, you got your job and you got your kids. Like, you are actually going out of your way to do volunteer stuff that you're not getting paid for. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and what she means by that is like either professional organizations like this or my right. fraternity or alpha or yeah. all these things. And I don't know, I think my <laughs> only defense is, I, I, I mean, I don't even know. Like, I, I think I just kind of, I don't really have a defense really. I think my defense was like, well, uh, they, 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 they they, they're even though I'm not getting paid, uh, you know, it's 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 contributing to my career. It's making me better, uh, you know. I try yep. to like, I ain't gonna lie, BS it, like you know, like. But in actuality, yes. in actuality, I think you know, if I really went down to it, you know, regardless if when we say these organizations give us opportunities uh, yeah. to like enhance our profession, for me, if I really really wanted to be completely honest. It was just another way, as I said earlier, to connect with people. <laughs> like you know, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, and so I don't yeah. know what what is your what has your wife been saying? Like when you're like, okay, I got this, I got Eastern Ace things because I know you're very involved. Right. You're not getting right. paid. How you how do you defend that? So I she's first of all she's very supportive of it. Um, and you know, the thing I try to be as open as possible with things, right? Like especially when I was going to the conference. You know, like, hey, listen, this is when it's coming up and, and all that stuff. So try to plan ahead and be respectful of all of all that stuff. Um, for her, I think she's like, I think she gets why I do it, you know, and and so like I know we've had this conversation you and I before, like you're much more extroverted than I am. And so for me, like going to networking events was always a challenge. And, and, it, and it, you know, I'm a career counselor, like talking about networking is what I do. I teach it. But 
actually doing it was, it was kind of a challenge. Um, Eastern ACE was really the first place I actually felt like a connection with some folks. I didn't feel like I was just a number at this, at, at a, at a conference. Um, and that really is what has inspired me to, to kind of get involved in everything. And, and like you say, it's a way to connect. So yeah, part of me is like, I love to just see people. Um, you know, even though it's a once a year thing, like, I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to go out to dinner. I can't wait to have a couple of drinks with some of these, with some of these guys, uh, and girls, right. Whoever. Um, and then part of me, you're right. Like there's, there's this professional development element to it. And I, I look at it from, okay, I probably built some skills. Um, I've, I've definitely gotten ideas. I've shared ideas with people. So there's definitely the professional approach to it as well. So it's, it's a nice combination, I think. Um, and I know what you're saying, like, yeah, like I'm not getting paid to do this. It's a lot of time. There are times, especially when you're involved in the, these committees, right? Where I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> right. But um, I, I really do enjoy the work because I know how much I value my experience within the organization. And I think others see it in the same way. Um, you mentioned Junior, you know, Junior is somebody that he and I connected at my first conference. Um, we've done presentations together for other organizations. Like it's been great. Um, and a bunch of other folks, Jill, who's, who's our incoming president, she's the one that really was like, hey, Joe Santa Cruz wants to get involved in Eastern Ace. <laughs> You know, where, and, and there's been a lot of other folks who I'm, I, I, I'd be, I'd be, I'm, I'm being remiss right now because I'm not mentioning everybody, but um, I, I just give you two examples, right, of just folks who have been so helpful to me in my own professional growth um, that have kind of gotten me out of that shell, if you will. Yeah. So one of the things I was thinking about, so you were able to defend it. Uh, <laughs> and, was I, was and, I, did and, I, and you see me, I'm letting my dog out. <laughs> I don't know. You defended it better than I did. You know, talking about your, you know, your personality and how much it meant to you. You know, my wife's still saying I'm doing way too much. Um, but uh, <laughs> one of the things too, uh, I, I ain't gonna lie, and and this is something I talked to my mentor about is that um, going into the pandemic, uh, I I I was Mister. I took on way too much, and so yep. this year uh, is going to be a year of reprioritization. Um, I, I quite honestly had said no to a lot of new things, um, you know, like yep. these roles, such as like people turning down things because I, I definitely ain't going to lie. I definitely burned out, um, burned out um, around the fall, right? Like okay. uh, uh, over the summer, right? When we we're going into pandemic is like that wave where you can accept everything. Like, you know, like new roles, I, I call it, I call it um, new role season, right? Like, Everything is is nominations and all that stuff is in the spring uh, for right. the incoming year. So I literally said yes to everything over the summer, summer 2020. Right. Went into the right. summer. I think, uh, be honest with you, work was really low in the summer. I was like, I can handle all this. Then the sem- the fall semester hits. And then it was and like, you nope. Um, Philip Wilkerson, uh, you, you took on all these things during a low period. So you you got tricked. You tricked yourself. And I burned out. I ain't gonna lie. So, uh, and I had to say, I'm gonna say no a lot of things this coming summer. Reprioritize, re, like refocus, um, right. because I don't want to. Definitely, the top roles is father, or well, yes, me, well, actually, husband first to me, husband, father, then work, and then all these extracurricular things. Right. And I was really not doing so well with. Uh, the, the father husband taking on so much. So right. that's a long round of what way says like, did you feel like you were having struggles with that prioritization or you were you're ripping and running? Not not so much because you know I think I've taken on more more recently in my in my professional life, but I think I've always been the one that's been reluctant to. I've been a little bit less of a risk taker and that's probably affected me a little bit. And like I said, you know, I'm much more introverted. I try to be as intentional as possible with what I'm doing. And sometimes I need to get myself out of my comfort zone, you know? So, so, you know, in, in that sense, um, no, but what I did find is, yeah, going into the fall semester when things that did get busier, I start second guessing myself. Am I spending enough time? Am I, am I, am I making sure that I'm prioritizing everything? And I think I was, um, but I, I think I just put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, and, and for whatever reason, you know, it's, I, I think it's because, you know, 
I strive to be the best at everything, <laughs> right? Like I want to make sure I'm whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm giving 110% all the time. And I think there's times where you have to say, take a step back, right? And maybe it's say no, maybe it's trust somebody else. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and just be, just be, you know, communicating about it and, and staying open about things. Um, with, like you kind of gave your list, like for sure, family for me, I'll, I'll combine it, right? Wife, kids, like that's, that's definitely number one, like no question about it. Um, and, and then, yeah, like you say, then you go into that, that work thing um, and everything else that kind of falls after it. But, um, you know, I, I think I've done a pretty good job of it. There's probably been days and weeks where it's been worse than others. Um, but we, you know, we, we try the best we can, you know, and um, I think, I think when you have that mentality of keeping family here first, right. Then that has to be your focal point for everything that you do. Right. And say, okay, maybe I am taking on too much. Maybe I need to take a little bit of a step back here and it's okay to do that. Right. And like it, it happens. Um, I think I've, I think I've gotten to a point where, you know, I'm stressing myself out a little bit with things, but it's, it's not enough that I'm, that I I think it's affecting my personal life. Mm, Okay. You know, so, and if if I get to that point, then it's time to reevaluate, right. (laughs) And say, what do I need to maybe let go of, right. In order, in order to do that. And that's what I got to, I had to do that. Yeah. Like, I mean, I did like, even as physical as an exercise of listing it out on a piece of paper, all the roles. Right. And I was like, wow, that's a lot. And I had to see it on a piece of paper. And then I literally had to like, you know, like really face it. And I had that, uh, I'll send it, I took a picture of it, sent it to my mentor. And she's like, Philip, like, this is, you're going to, you're, you're running too fast. You're going to burn out. And then I, you know, I I think I'm the same way where I try to give a hundred and something, 110, but then I realized I was only giving like 70. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And I was like, man, that's, that's not a reflection of who I am. And so I was like, uh, and right. So I definitely don't want people to think that I'm seventy percent effort. That's my normal. Of course. So I rather I rather let go of things that are slacking and then focus on things I can excel at. So. Right. You prioritize it. You know, um, like he, I'll give you an example with Eastern Ace too. So right. my second year chair and pro, uh, co-chairing programming. I know next year I'm not ch- co-chairing programming. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. It's so much, and I think that. I want to stay involved in the organization. I'd, I'd like to continue to do that, um, but I think I need to. I think I need to find a role that's less intensive, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and and, that, and that'll be my approach, kind of going into it, you know. And it's because yeah. I, I I know the time that it takes, the effort that it takes, and you know, given all the craziness that's been happening with the pandemic, that you know, going to virtual and all that stuff has has just added more to the plate. Um, I, I think at this point, I'm like, okay, it's been two years it's time to, to change it up a little bit for, for something different. And I think I need to just, you know, slow it down a little bit for a year, catch my breath, so to speak. Well, I was thinking about that too. And another thing that I don't know, my boss told me, uh, which shout out to her, Tracy, um, she would, she would actually check me and say, I don't think you should do that. Why don't you give it to someone else? Pass the blessing. And then I realized, all right. So I started doing this new strategy where like, instead of just saying no, I try to find someone to replace me. And so right. I put someone else on and then I get credit. I get credit for at least one introducing someone else. That person right. that gets to do it says, wow, Philip, thank you for putting me on. And then the other right. person was like, thank you for not just saying no and flat out right. leaving me to scramble. You at least gave me a good person to follow up with. So that's gonna right. be kind of my mindset too, where um, with that list I told you of a lot of no's. Right. Like, I'm not going to just say flat out no. I'm going to say no, but how about and have a couple of people that I think. Sure. Let me ask you this though. Do you think that your reluctancy around that was was because of trust? And oh, the reason I ask that for me, like whether that means delegating something, a task and work, something else like that. For me, I'm always like, I, I need to trust more, right? Like I, I can't control everything. I need to get someone, somebody, there are other folks that can, can do this job. Right. And so I'm okay. If I do ask to delegate that stuff and, and maybe that's not an apples to apples of what you're describing, but no, it's um, very close. Well, yeah. I, it's well, kind of what I heard. Right. So, well, well, no, I mean, my reason, my rationale is different, but there yeah. is an intrinsic thing. Like yours might be control and I want to have control over it. Do it my way. Mine was more like, wow. Like it's an ego, ego thing. Like, 
You okay. know, um, I'm saying yes to all these things because uh, I wasn't, I've never been asked before, you know, like it yeah. made me feel good. It was feel, it was, it, sure. it, it felt like an honor to be asked. Like they asked me, I can do it. But then I realized like, no, someone else can do it too. And I think it really came from a place of insecurity, like, of like, wow, like, you know, like, as I said earlier, uh, you know, this, I was going into a year where I'm starting to feel more confident in my career and my abilities that I was like, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, I could do this. Yeah, I could do this. And then I realized that like, no, like it's, it still feels good to be asked, but then at the same time, they can ask someone else. And, of course. Um, and so I think it was more for yours is more control. Mine was more like uh, yeah. insecurity and ego. Like I got to do it. They asked me, like they asked right. me, they asked, right. Philip. they didn't ask someone else. Of course. Uh, of course. And, and I think that's, but that's part of our professional growth, isn't it? To yeah, be like, Hey, yeah. you know what? I mean, we're, it's great that we're being asked to do this, but maybe if there's not enough time, maybe you're right. Like maybe I need to trust a little bit more, right? Like lose a little bit, a little bit of that control and that's okay. And somebody else will get it done. And, and like you say, in your case, it's like, Hey, they asked me, but I have all these other things that I know I have to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay to kind of pass this along to somebody else. So that to me, I look at it as it's, it's our professional development and professional growth. Well, I think I agree with that. I think that, well, I think one of the things that COVID has done, and, and maybe this is, I think it's put a, a large mirror on any kinks that we may have had. So for instance, kinks in regards to, you know, like being a, a good person of time management. COVID, it's like, okay, well, uh, this pandemic is like, well, then you're going to be, you're going to have to force yourself to be better at time management. Um, I'm not good at keeping in touch with people. Okay. Well, we're going to put you in a super isolating situation and force you or should go outside your comfort zone and connect with people because you're going to be very lonely. So I feel like anything that you might've needed to work on, uh, during, uh, before, uh, March, 2020, uh, it's forced you to do it. And if you don't, uh, then it just sucks. Like it, you got worse. <laughs> like it, it got worse, right? Like your time management. Is better. <laughs> your, your time management got worse. Or but or, no, but you're right. Yeah, you're 100 percent right about that. Like especially the staying in touch thing. Like I am not good about that. I will completely admit that. Where um, and it has. It's 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 kind of forced you to be like, let me text somebody, see what's going on. And even like you know, uh, I used to work at a, a before I was at Salem State. I was at Wentworth. And um, had a good group of, of friends from, from Wentworth, so, uh, co-workers, obviously, but, but they become friends. Um, and we used to kind of see each other maybe like once or twice a year type of thing, you know, where you, you, everybody kind of go out to dinner or something or go out to lunch and hadn't done that in a while. And, and so one of the one of the guys who was really, really good about keeping in touch with everybody set up some Zoom calls. And that led to some other smaller zoom sessions and i'm like this is so good just to connect with people um and and so you're right it's kind of forced us especially right to come out of that comfort zone and say let's prioritize what really is important here right and like let's 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 make sure we can focus in on the things that we we need to be focusing on because if we don't we're we're gonna we're gonna feel stuck and we're gonna feel (laughs) you know so i got one thing to think about like on the flip side uh those natural skills you know Yes. Um, natural skills, uh, which ones have actually started to flourish during COVID? Okay. Like, ones, so, like one was like, y'all was already kind of good at this before COVID. Okay. And then you got okay. better at it or you got to shine at it uh, during okay. COVID. Like which one okay. for you? So I think for me, well, I'll start with what have I been good at? I've always been good at organizational skills. Mm-hmm. Um, this has really forced me to be organized and prioritize and all that stuff. So I think that has helped to really accentuate that. Um, I think I've done a really good job of it, particularly when we're talking about balancing work and home life, right? Mm-hmm. What I think has been a new skill uh, or maybe a further developed skill mm-hmm. has been adaptability. I've always been one who's, you know, kind of, I don't want to say stuck in my ways with everything, but maybe like reluctant to kind of step out of that. Right. I, um, and I think COVID has forced adaptability on me so much that I've, I've just had to make changes and, and, and do things differently. Um, and I, I think because of that, I, I, I've, I've really enhanced 
<laughs> the ability to be adaptable. Um, that's so that that's kind of where I where I would go with it. And what do yeah, you? I was, about to, I was about to say like the one for me was um, I always actually was a really good initiator with social with like friends and text. Um, okay, and so I was able to channel that. Like I started a um, a monthly Zoom call with all the black male faculty staff. Cool. And I just like said, hey, come here's the link. Uh, coming not and then it started growing and growing and I've done it consistently once a month uh, since all no since July and it, wow. even got, it even got the notice of the president of Mason who's oh, a black, awesome. who's a black male and was like I don't know like that's pretty organized and I I, I didn't everyone was like thank you for your leadership Philip I was like I didn't do any leadership I just I just said, I set up a zoom call yeah, yeah I set up a zoom call <laughs> Um, and, you know, I talked about it and had a group, but I was like, I was always pretty good at corralling people, um, like right. birthday parties. But I think I was doing it not because I was good at corralling. I was like, I'm just a social person. So I like, right. I just like getting people together. So it's in yeah. your nature, right? It's like, that, that was because you're much yeah. more extroverted, you know, like yeah. I said, I know we've talked about that before. I'm much more introverted. So for me, it was like, I've always kind of, you know, not been that way. <laughs> But, yeah. but it's, it's forced me to be like, Hey, let's, let's get to yeah, Let's connect, you know, and let's, let's set this up. And, and it's been good. I think, another, but the, uh, the other one, like you said, growing skill, I think the growing skill was um, organization. Like I'm writing notes now okay. of our podcast. Um, okay. I'm, I'm definitely getting slowly better calendar, <laughs> like my calendar <laughs> day. I feel it's a, a a morning briefing with my wife like i feel like we're in the war room you know and we're like <laughs> exactly. what you got today what you got today and we look we're literally looking at our calendars and so me i think me and my wife have gotten on a on a i mean we have days where i like forgot that she had something and i forgot you know whatever but right. we have been better in sync with like she knows that like sunday nights and wednesday nights is my podcast night right and we, and, we, and that's because we set a structure and so sure. we, gotten, we gotten better with that yeah, and it, you know, it's almost like you have a new respect for each other, right? Oh, I, yeah. Because like the work environment, our work environments have never crossed paths. I mean, in, in the same time, I'm saying, right? Like it's, we, we've, we've always had our professional lives, but it would be, I would be going to work and then coming home. And then, so th- that was the only, you know, part of it where now it's like, it's, it's embedded into our lives. And um, I think we've, you know, had to do that. We've been forced to do it. Kind of like what you say, you have like that, that initial conversation in the morning. That's a lot of times what we're doing. Are you busy today? What, what's your, what, you know, what time do you do? You definitely have to, you know, and, and it's, and, and you figure it out on the fly sometimes, right? Unless it's like a big thing and we've already talked about it, but um, okay, great. I can come up and make lunch, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. I, know you're, I know you're on a call at noon. Like I'm going to come up and make lunch for the kids and yeah. that'll be it. <laughs> yeah. Maggie, we definitely, I mean, I don't know. We have somewhere was like, yo, which which one of your meetings can you be camera off? And like, you like we have like, you have a meeting today. Is it a meeting meeting? Or like one where like, you need to do a lot of talking. And that's like, we're like, okay. <laughs> and like, right, uh, right. as a wife, my wife is a social worker. She's like, yo, this is super confidential. Close the door. The kids can't bust in and interrupt me. Like, this is serious. Okay. Right. And I'm like, you know right. me, like, I'm like this, like I have to, at all costs, do not let the kids interrupt. Uh, my wife during this is she, you know, so we, we have to like yeah. be very transparent. And I love what you right. said earlier is that we have enough respect. Uh, not, we have, we have a more of a respect, but I've actually during this time, I think I know exactly like, I feel like I know more what my wife does for work. <laughs> like, yes. You know, like, like, yes. Like what a meeting is, what her, like I already knew. Right. A little bit about her social work role in schools, but now I, yeah. I actually know about, you know, what kind of meeting she's sitting on. I feel yes. like I know her co I know her coworkers more. She'd be saying names. I'd be like, oh yeah, that da, 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 da. like I'd be like knowing more about her, the lingo about her job, which absolutely I think I, I, think I have a new appreciation once this is over with. Like agreed. You know, I know her her boss, I know all that stuff now. So. And I'll say this to you too. So not only is there a new appreciation for that stuff and have I learned more about it as a career person, mm-hmm. there's like this genuine kind of curiosity around it. And I've actually referred some students, not to my wife, but I've referred them to what she does. Psychology majors. I'm like, you ever thought about market research? 
And I actually had one of my, one, a student that I met with, she's like, I'm going to look into that a little bit more, you know, and I, and I gave her some names of companies and stuff. And, and it's funny. So, you, you, you know, it, there's like this genuine, like husband, wife curiosity, but, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, I, I it kind of blends in with, again, the world we're living in. Right. And, and, and I, and I, and I take it into my work too. So, well, um, I mean, interesting. Well, I do that too. Also, like if I know a kid is very, in, a kid is interested in social work and it's not everyone named mama, but like some kids, I, sure. I'll set, I'll set them up with an informational interview with my wife. There you and, go. And ask, yeah, you can ask her questions about the field and, you know, grad school, right. you're like, right. you're like, cause you got to go to grad school. And, and she's done that. She's had some informational it's interviews awesome. with people. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you know, not everyone. I know because she's like, I got to work now. So like, I'm like yeah, I know like, that's all right. That's what it is. The timing of things, right? Right. Yeah. So, so we're yeah. at a part of the show. I mean, this is great. I love this this conversation about working dads. We touched on a bunch of different things. Obviously, you're still employed. I'm still employed, so we must be doing something right. <laughs> um, so this is the okay. part of the show called Shot for Shot, where you get to ask me a random question. I get to ask you okay. a question, random question, whatever. Do you want to go first? I go first. Um. I, I have a good, go I have ahead. a, I have a good one, but why don't you go first? Okay. So, yeah. um, Boston through and through, you know what I'm saying? I think this is a kind of a softball one. So I might ask okay. too, uh, was you hurt when Brady won another Super Bowl with someone else? <laughs> <laughs> so it's so funny you asked that question. So I am Boston through and through, but I am not a Patriots fan. Oh, okay. Which one? Yeah. So I'm actually, and I'm not a Tom Brady fan either. So I was, <laughs> I was not rooting for him, but, um, yeah, it's weird. Like I'm, I'm much more of a hockey and basketball as opposed to okay. football and baseball. I, you know, the games have changed. I think since you know, I appreciate more defense in, in football, and I feel like that's kind of gone away. Um, so for me, it's more kind of individual players and stuff like that. And um, so yeah, it actually didn't bother me one bit. <laughs> okay, well, that is good because he's not my goat. My favorite player. My favorite quarterback of all time is Peyton Manning. So here's my okay. I, I'm a big I, I like Manning, um, but my I, I would say like you know in terms of players, Barry Sanders is my guy. So. Oh, Barry Sanders is my favorite oh, player yeah. of all time. Favorite player of all time, easily, easily. Oh, yeah. I love it. Well, I've yep. been, we we got that vibe because I have his jersey. It's my guy. Jersey. Oh, me too. I have, I have a, a card. Yeah. I have a card. So here's okay. Here's my question. Then. All right. So COVID uh, has affected a lot of sports, but so it is a sports. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite sport and sure what, you know, what is going to be one of the first sporting venues that you're going to try to go see, go to once this, this pandemic is over? Uh, yeah. You, yeah. You, you got to get a ticket and go to the game. Which one? Yep. So my, my favorite sport to watch is hockey and my favorite team is, is the Bruins. And so right. I think that would probably be my thing. If going to a game at some point, that would be the, that would be the number one thing on my list, you know? Um, and I think that, you know, close behind that would be the Celtics. You know, so and they both play in the same building. So Bruins or Celtics, one of those games I think is is really ideal to me. I love it. Do you have have you do you have a favorite uh you know Celtic Bruin memory? Uh I do. I do for sure. Um I would say for the Celtics, um no question about it, when they when they won the championship in 08. Um just because of all the things that led up to it, um and, and you know. Paul Pierce is my, my all-time favorite Celtic, but when they got Kevin Garnett, it just, it changed the game. And I'll never forget driving into work that day, the talk of Kevin Garnett, I, 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 I couldn't believe it. Um, and when it actually happened, it was just, it was amazing. Actually, I bought tickets to opening night that year. Um, I called I call my buddy. I said, Hey, we're going, we're going to this game. And um, so that, you know, call it when they got him or just winning the championship that year um, for the Bruins. Um, it was winning the Stanley cup, but I actually got to go to game six of the cup finals. Um, and it was, it is easily the, the, the greatest sports memory of my life. I don't think anything will ever come close to that unless I'm able to see them win the cup in the same building. Um, it was, it was incredible. Um, just the atmosphere, you never experienced anything like it. Um, so, you know, those are, those are two of my, my strong ones. Dang, that's awesome. And you're like that, yeah. that, off the top of your head. I wish I could say oh, yeah. that. I got, I, I got the Washington football club and I don't have any happy. Like, <laughs> I, well, I remember, I remember way back in the day, was it 90, what, 91, 92? Yeah. Okay. I was right? like, yeah. I, I remember, I remember watching this. I was a kid. I was, I was a kid. kid. I was watching yeah. that, but 
talking about actually yeah. going to a venue, all I have is heartbreak yes. and sadness. <laughs> <laughs> and going to well, games well you know, that's the thing. People think like Boston sports because they've had a lot of success that it's it's all been that way. It's never, it has not been like that forever. Uh, trust me, you know, I, I felt a lot of heartbreak, more heartbreak than I think I, I, I want to. So uh, I, I know what that's like, believe me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what's your question for me? All right, so it's it's on the lines of, of sports too. Um, and I've asked this question to a couple people and I'm, and I'm curious to get your answer to it. Who do you think is the coolest athlete of all time? And I have my answer, but I, I'm curious to know who you think is. Like coolest, like someone I would want to hang out with? Coolest that just epitomized, you know, like to have that swagger that you're like, man, that person is just so cool, you know? Uh, and I think okay. you'll see where I'm going when I give you my well, answer. Actually, okay, like actual personality. And yeah, like, could be that. Could be that, yeah. All right, so, okay, here's, I, got, I got two answers because okay. it depends on if you think wrestling is fake or not. Like, like, so if it's wrestling, I'll like go you with consider it. I'll wrestling. Go with it. If you consider, yeah. if you consider wrestling a sport, which they do sometimes, then it's The Rock. Like The Rock okay. is awesome. I love him. Slash he Stone cool. Cold, both of those two. Sure. Like, the Rock and Stone Cold. If it's talking okay. about professional sports, like real, like other sports, then I'm going yeah. with Deion Sanders. Oh, okay. And the reason why is okay. like legit. If you watch anything, he was good. With, like he like monitorized his swag, right? Like he did, he, he became prime time and he, he had like outfits and he could, he would have performances and like, no, like he had a celebrations like that was like legit. Like he made a celebration, like he did a little thing, like the little high school. Oh, I remember into the end zone, of course. Um, into the end zone. And so, I mean, when you, and so I, I didn't, I'm not saying athletically gifted, I'm talking about, like, you're talking about cool and swag. Exactly. I, I, mean, I think the originator definitely, well, okay. There's one more person in regards to okay. that too. I would say one more. I, I, so I, I'm, I got wrestling, the fake one, right? So okay. I got the rock and stone cold. I got football. And then just in general of just like being a great speaker was Muhammad yep. Ali. Okay. Because Muhammad, Muhammad okay. Ali, if you just historically, yeah. uh, man, like I watched videos of him talking and he just like, it was crazy. Like he would just, talk big talk big right like about himself sure. but then he didn't suck <laughs> like right he, he, like he literally was a, a excellent boxer um yeah. but just he would rhyme uh he would get in his opponent's heads he would just I, I watched interviews where he like would mix like actual social justice issues like you know uh, like oh, i don't want to fight huge um, huge about that stuff yeah so yeah. i mean I'll, I'll, i'll lead to me is like just culturally I, yeah, I don't know if iconic. there's ever been an, an athlete that has been that way, that has, has gotten to that type of status. I mean, yeah, I don't think so, you know, yeah. in terms of greatness at your sport and then, you know, the, the cultural things too, right? The social elements to all that stuff. I, I don't know if there's had been anybody. I mean, maybe LeBron is at that point right now, but I don't know. Uh, if he, but okay, you know, the, the only difference, okay, LeBron because of social media. LeBron right, because that's of true. Reach, but as a that's straight, true. but... I would, I would say the not say the edge, and, and and you know it's obviously tomato tomato. We can't really put people's yeah. experiences, but right. I would say this though. But the being a speaker and actually like talking True. as an or like no one can talk like Muhammad Ali. True, like, agree. Way, like he would just he he was like a he was like a public speaker. Like he, he was. was like. He was like, he was. Legit. yeah, like, like every he time was. he talked was like a TED talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. no, it's true. Right. It's true. So, it's true. So I, I, I think minus Muhammad, all that, I just thought about in my head, Muhammad Ali, give it to him. Good. The okay. goat of coolness, swag, athletic That's your guy. Okay. I like that. Uh, I like iconic, that. being an icon, icon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Muhammad yeah. Ali. See, for me, because I'm like, I look at it just from the perspective of the swag and the cool, I'm like, I, I want to be this guy. Ken Griffey Jr. for me is the coolest athlete I mean, I just remember like in the home run derbies, the backwards hat, like, I mean, the guy was just, he was just different, you know? And like, and I think, you know, as, as a kid growing up in the nineties, like there were like a few people that you idolized. And I think Dion's one of those two for, for yeah. some folks, right? Yeah, he, had, he had the chain and the, and the he chain. had some, he had some of it, but to me it was Griffey. Like I, I wanted to be Ken Griffey Jr. And, but I just think his entire, like, he was just so naturally gifted at what he did and he made it look so easy, yeah. but there was a little bit of that swag involved with it, you know? And, and so that's why to, to me that, that would be my answer. 
Um, well, I think I think I agree. Ken Griffey was really cool. Uh, I think another thing that makes these athletes, uh, you know, and we and we think about personal branding and stuff, is that like he made a brand. Like he had his shoes. He had his own shoes. Yeah. Uh, remember, he had his own video game. Like he was. Of course, I. I mean, I played it every day. <laughs> and so you know, I I don't know if that's just a natural coolness or yeah. like maybe maybe your wife could do some market research where someone. <laughs> I'm saying they tap into this guy to say this guy got it. He got whatever right. it is. Right. They right. Build a whole brand around it, and right. they do it. And I think, yeah, you know, the thing about what like those guys did in the '90s, like yeah. think about how big they would be now. Nowadays, I know it was with, before with it all, right? With, yeah, with as much reach as they could have. They just had TV and cable, and that's it. But that's it. Add, add a add a phone to the add a phone. And a social media where they also share their own voice, and then look at how crazy that could be. But um, sure, yeah, Griffin sure. was cool. Now you say Griffin was cool. I remember the video. You game. see what I'm going with it? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it's just and, and it was like the guy that like it was it was it was after the best swing anyone's ever seen, right? And you know I think with all the injuries, if if he wasn't injured as much, you know you're talking about maybe the best baseball player ever to live. I mean I think he's in the convert. He could have been in that conversation. I think he could have been in that conversation if he didn't get hurt. You know. Um, I mean, what they call him the natural, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And his dad was good yeah. too. So that was know, good too. Yeah. So, and I think, I think the last thing to say about that, about all these athletes. And I think the, the thing I love the most about all this stuff, as we say, swag and F, you know, natural athletic ability, but then behind the scenes, we know the stories that these guys worked incredibly hard. Like oh, Muhammad amazing. Ali, Muhammad Ali, like everyone thinks like, you know, he's smooth. But you know, if he 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 like trained like crazy. He he had a yeah. work he had a work ethic like crazy. Uh, I know these. It's I insane know, what these guys. I know do. it's fake. I know it's fake. But the wrestlers like The Rock works out more than anyone ever. Oh knows. yeah, I've read his like diet plans. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy uh, bro. <laughs> who else? Ken Griffey. I know. Talking about he had an effortless bat, but he probably took like a thousand swings. Before he had to have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's great. Dang, it is. Now, See, that's that's the that. thing is like, I'm we don't realize, I think that's what we appreciate now, right? Is like how hard those guys work. We don't realize that when you're a kid, you're just like, man, they're just so good. <laughs> that's it. Oh, I'm about but, to go uh, back in that rabbit hole. I'm about to look at some King Griffey highlights. Got to go go YouTube. back and look at the highlights. I'm I'm at, Watch I'm him run up the King. wall. Watch him run up the wall a couple of times. Make oh, yeah, catches. It's yeah. insane. You know? Do you remember when he was in a movie? I can't remember a movie. Was it like? Yes, it was, I do. It wasn't Angels in the Outfield. It was one of those 90s. It was Little Big League. Little Big League. Yes. 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 And, and actually that was it too. Remember he hit the home run and like, that was it. Yes. Yes. So, I knew he was in yeah. a movie. Like yeah. yes, I, his brand, he was in movies. He was in everything. Everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, you know, a poster on my wall. Like, I mean, <laughs> if I, and I'm, I know I'm like one of probably millions to say that, but I mean, I just, you know, every day playing outside, I'm like Griffey, you know, that, that's who I wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, that was great. Now you make me want to be very nostalgic about '90s sports because I absolutely that was absolutely. iconic. I remember having baseball. I got Griffey. I got some baseball cards. I had the cards. Uh, like I hold on to those things. This has been great. Uh, I'm really awesome. excited. Um, thank you for being on the show. This is the part of the show we call shout outs and plugs. Um, you know, shout out whoever you want to show love to, and then hey. plugs. Plugs are anything that you want to plug, obviously, and I'll put it in the um, show notes. I'll, I'll make okay. sure, you know, whoever, you know, follow me, whatever, all those things. So sure. the um, stage is set. Uh, okay. Shout out some plugs. All right. So the first shuttle, so go to my, my wife and my, my two boys. Um, and then I think uh, because we're, you know, we connected through a professional um, place. I'll, I'll say shout out to my coworkers, shout out to and a lot of the Eastern ACE folks who uh, have helped me along the way uh, professionally. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, and what was the second part? I'm sorry. Plugs, whatever you want people. Plugs, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow you or whatever, whatever you work. Yeah, on, you know. So, so the thing for me on social media is like, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you're gonna get a lot of stuff about sports, a <laughs> little, little bit about movies. You know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't do much with the career stuff on, in that space, but um, you know, drop a line. You want to, you want to, you want to talk '90s sports. <laughs> you want to talk anything like that? Uh, I'm down for it. Um, and and then too, you know, I think just. I'll go back to professionally too. Like, you know, it's important to get involved. And, and, and I think that, um, 
you know, special, special plug for our organization. Um, if you're, if you're in the career space and you're listening to this right now and you're, and you're not involved, highly recommend it. Um, a lot of great folks in it and, and, and a lot of opportunity there too. So I'll do, I'll do a little plug for our friends at Eastern Ace. There you go. And I'll put them, you know, they, they, uh, they know where to find it. So the, Joe, this, this has been great. Thank you so much for being on our show. Um, for the listeners, if you like this episode, please share it with your family and friends. Um, you can also drop a hotline, uh, which is 571-336-6560. That's 571-336-6560. Uh, spreading positivity is a movement and we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.